President Trump arrived at the U.S. District Court in Washington, D.C. to make his initial appearance in federal court after being indicted for the third time. And as expected, he pled not guilty to the four counts that he has been charged with. So the question is now, how is all this going to unfold? What does this mean? How did we even get to this point? And here to do some unpacking of all of this for us is Mike Davis. He's the founder of the Article Three Project. He spent nearly 10 years as a civil litigator in Denver, and he also served in all three branches of our federal government. Mike, welcome back to the program. Good to see you. Thank you for having me back on. Well, it's always an honor. So let's just get started with a, a little background, uh, specifically uh, regarding Jack Smith. What do we know about this special counsel? Uh, Jack Smith is the political hitman who Democrats sent in to take out Republican presidential contenders, like Jack Smith did before 2016 with former governor, uh, for, for, former Virginia governor Bob McDonnell, a likely presidential or vice presidential candidate. Jack Smith was the head of Obama's public integrity section at the Justice Department at the time, and he brought these bogus corruption charges against then Governor McDonnell. He won a conviction and took him out of the presidential and vice presidential uh, race before 2016. The Supreme Court ultimately reversed Jack Smith eight to nothing. It would have been nine to nothing, but Justice Scalia passed away. It is very hard to have a criminal conviction overturned by the Supreme Court. It is nearly impossible for that to happen unanimously. But Jack Smith, the Democrats' Scud missile launched to take out President Trump, managed to do this with Governor Bob McDonald before 2016. And the Democrats, Biden, Garland, and Jack Smith are running the same play again for President Trump in 2024. They're trying to indict President Trump for the non for various non crimes, non crime of uh, you know Alvin Bragg indicting Trump for the non crime of a business businessman settling a nuisance claim, the first indictment of a former president in U.S. history. Jack Smith uh, uh, waited 29 months after President Trump left office to indict President Trump for the non crime of a former president having his presidential records, which is allowed by the Presidential Records Act. Now Jack Smith, all of these with Merrick Garland and Joe Biden's green lighting, has indicted President Trump, uh, again, this time for the non-crime of a presidential candidate objecting to a presidential election, which is allowed by the Electoral Count Act of 1887, and twisting arms politically is allowed by the First Amendment. This is Democrat lawfare against President Trump because Democrats fear they cannot beat Trump on November 7th, 2024. Wow. Well, what a what a historical background right there that you've laid out for us. You know, it's uh, so many things come to my mind while you're talking about this, Mike. I think of how in the world do people like Jack Smith, you know, how do they get in the positions where they're in? And how do we reverse all this as a nation? We'll get to that in a little bit. But right now, what does this mean for our justice system in America? Where is all of this going, do you think? I think President Obama changed everything when he politicized and weaponized the Justice Department with Eric Holder. Uh, they hired Jack Smith back then. Jack, Smith, Jack Smith's wife was a producer of Michelle Obama's documentary. Jack Smith's wife donated $1,000 to Obama's campaign and voila, Jack Smith becomes the chief of the public integrity section at the Justice Department. And it's just part of a pattern by the Democrats, starting with Obama, to politicize and weaponize our justice system and our intel agencies to protect their friends and to go after their political enemies. We saw this in 2016 uh, when Hillary Clinton got caught with her illegal home server, with our nation's most classified secrets, hacked by our worst enemies, including probably Russia, and she destroyed this evidence in the face of congressional subpoenas. And so what did they do? They made up the Russian collusion hoax against President Trump. And so if, these, if this hack material uh, comes out from Russia before the 2016 campaign, 
Hillary and the Democrats can falsely claim that Trump was colluding with the Russians and running an intel operation on Hillary Clinton. In 2020, uh, Joe Biden got caught with, with, uh, with Hunter Biden's laptop from hell, evidencing the Biden's uh, foreign, corruption, uh, foreign bribery and corruption schemes, tens of millions of dollars to every single Biden except for the five-year-old granddaughter who uh, Joe Biden and Jill Biden didn't acknowledge for five years until recently. Uh, so what did the Democrats do? They had 51 former intel officials corruptly uh, lie, lie and say that this was a Russian disinformation campaign, this Hunter Biden laptop, got the New York Post, America's oldest newspaper, uh, censored by big tech platforms, uh, got Americans censored for posting the story of the New York Post. And here we are again in 2024. They're going to interfere with this election again. Our law enforcement and intel agencies are going to interfere in this election, election again by politicizing and weaponizing the justice system to go after Trump for nine crimes while, while they're covering up Biden's foreign bribery, Biden's corruption. He is clearly compromised as the president of the United States, and they're going to try to go after Trump and throw him in prison for his fight with Biden's librarians and other bureaucrats over records Trump is allowed to have and over disputing a presidential election. Well, it's unbelievable what what is unfolding in this two-tiered system is just glaring its face at us anymore. It's no longer in hiding. It appears to have come out of the closet, so to speak, and is uh, just pounding us, bulldozing down under us. And I, I'll get to that here in just a second. But I, I do want to say this as well. This indictment of this week, there's more to come. I mean, I'm, I'm from Georgia and have been following what's happening in Fulton County. I've been informed that they have now put barricades around the courthouse there, which would indicate that uh, another indictment is on the way. And, uh, you know, they want to protect the courthouse from all these rioting conservatives or whatever. It's all theater, but nonetheless, that's happening. So there's more to come, right? Where, where does all this end? For President well, that's Trump. the issue. We, we have well, uh, Jack Smith will bring another superseding, superseding indictment at some point and name the six alleged co-conspirators, maybe bring a seditious uh, conspiracy claim against Trump to try to knock him out under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, a, a novel and bogus legal theory. But that's what the Democrats will try. You have, like you said, Fulton County DA Fannie Willis bringing her January 6 claims. We have uh, Tish James, the New York Attorney General, bringing civil fraud claims against Trump for the non-fraud of borrowing money from sophisticated banks and paying these banks back with interest, and somehow that's fraud. This is lawfare by Democrats. And you ask how this ends? This will end with the Supreme Court at some point, and the Supreme Court will take Donald Trump's side in all of these cases, I assure you. But the problem is, is they won't be able to get to these cases before November 7th. 2024. So how this ends is the American people stands up to this lawfare and this weaponization uh, of our law enforcement and intel agencies and says, you know what, we're not going to let a D.C. prosecutor and a D.C. judge and a 95 percent Democrat D.C. jury, 99 percent Trump deranged D.C. jury pick our next president. We the people get to pick our president. And that's how the American people can take the most forceful stand against this. All right, so let's go down this a little bit further. Our average viewer listener right now is kind of wondering, okay, I can vote, but what else What else can I do here? I mean, what really are your expectations as to what's going to happen? I, I, you've, you've alluded to it, but just, just hit on what are the expectations and what, what are your hopes that, uh, that what's going to happen? What, what are your expectations, expectations and what can people do right now to engage in whatever way that they can. So I would say this, there is no chance that President Trump is going to get a fair trial in Washington, D.C. You have Agreed. this Garland special counsel, Jack Smith, who has a track record of being a partisan hack, a lawless partisan hack. You have this Obama judge, Tanya uh, Shukin, in D.C., who is a leftist. She was a former public defender, but apparently she only cares about people in D.C. who carjack, um, rob places, and murder people because she has shown with January 6th that she is the most harsh. She is one of the most harsh judges of them all for these for the January 
six protesters, and you're going to have a D.C. jury that's 95 percent Democrat and 99 percent Trump deranged. And so there's no chance that Trump's going to get a fair trial in D.C. He, w he will be found guilty. It's lawless. Uh, he, uh, the, the judge will convict him. The D.C. Circuit will almost certainly affirm the conviction because Obama transformed the D.C. Circuit to all these left-wing radical judges. And so this is going to have to be resolved legally by the Supreme Court. There is no doubt in my mind that the Supreme Court will reverse this criminal conviction, all of these criminal convictions, because they're lawless. But again, the, the, we have something between now and the Supreme Court, and that's called the 2024 presidential election. And so the American people need to register to vote. They need to make sure their friends and family members are registered to vote. They need to make sure that they're voting. In the meantime, House Republicans need to step up their game. This is lawfare by Democrats. It's a zero-sum game. When Democrats are on offense, which they have been since August, since the Mar-a-Lago raid a year ago, that means they're not on defense. And so re House Republicans need to put uh, these people on defense. They need to start having oversight hearings. They need to start subpoenaing witnesses and documents. They need to open an impeachment inquiry against President Biden for his clear corruption. They need to open an impeachment inquiry against Attorney General Merrick Garland for his clear cover-up of his boss's corruption. Republicans need to get tougher now. They need to start taking off the gloves and punching back. Well, I think they are in process of that, but I agree it needs uh, the they need to step up the game. So real quickly, because I want to go, I want to switch gears in the last couple of minutes we have to the Devin Archer testimony. But you do not see anything that's happening now to Trump, because people ask me this all of the time. Is any of this going to impact his run for president? I think it's going to put him back in the White House, because I think the Alvin Bragg indictment won Trump the nomination. I think the first Jack Smith indictment uh, put him into contention strongly with Biden. I think the second Jack Smith indictment is going to help Trump win comfortably by like maybe two or three percentage points. And each indictment on top of that, I think the American people, if you look at the polling, they see this for what it is. This is political lawfare to take out President Trump because Democrats fear they, that he'll beat President Biden or Governor Newsom on November 7th, 2024. Okay. All right. Uh, well, let me switch gears, if I can, real quickly, just uh, two minutes less, less than two minutes to go. Uh, yeah, the testimony of Devin Archer, former business partner of Hunter Biden, what's your take on that? I think that Devin Archer's testimony is devastating for President Biden because it shows that President Biden was absolutely involved in the, the Biden crime family's foreign bribery and corruption schemes, their business. And uh, President Biden lied about this repeatedly to the American people. This is impeachable conduct by Joe Biden, and House Republicans should move forward with impeachment. A lot of the American people uh, are not hearing about this because the mainstream, meaning liberal media, is not reporting this. But an impeachment inquiry would force the mainstream media to report on Joe Biden's obvious corruption. This is so much bigger than Trump or Biden. You cannot have a president of the United States who is compromised by foreign bribes and other corruption. It leads to very bad things in this country. Joe Biden has taken tens of millions of dollars. Joe Biden and his family have taken tens of millions of dollars from Ukraine and China. Those are the two biggest trouble spots in the world right now with Russia and Ukraine and China and Taiwan. And when you have a weak, compromised president, our enemies exploit it like Russia is doing in Ukraine right now. Well, it sounds like you would disagree with the Democrats who are saying this whole testimony was a nothing burger. A nothing burger that vice, uh, then Vice President Joe Biden participated with 20 phone calls with his, you know, 50-year-old corrupt drug addict son's foreign business dealings, lied about it, went to meetings, went to dinners. There's evidence that the Bidens took three and a half million dollars from the Moscow oligarch tens of millions of dollars from China, $10 million from Burisma, uh, foreign bribe where Biden threatened to cut off a billion dollars in USA. Mike, we're going to have to leave it there. Yeah. Thank Listen, you for having I me. I can't on. thank you enough. Thank Mike, you for having me. Great on. to have you.